Welcome back to another edition of The Tech Show. I'm your host, Alan Yost, and today we have John from Intel's Server Customer Support. John, what is it that you're going to show us today? Today we're going to provide a short demonstration on the setup and use of the Intel Entry Storage System SS4200E. Hey, that's great. I think you have a lot to do, so I'm going to let you get right down to your business. Okay. We'll be covering installing hard disk drives, installing the client application, device discovery, and general integration for use. I've taken the, the system out of the shipping box. With the system, we've got some additional items. We've got the feet to install for a horizontal using the slots on the bottom, or a vertical configuration using the slots on the side. We could have the system upright. In addition, there's a package of 18 rotational vibration screws, and we'll cover these more later, an Ethernet cable, and the, and the documentation package that includes the Quick Start User's Guide, which we're using for this demonstration here, a resource CD that, it, that includes software applications and documentation, and an attention document that contains information that wasn't available at the time the other, do the other documents were created. When using your storage system, please read the attention document before using it for the first time. The first thing we're going to do is install the hard disk drives. You can get a list of hard drives that are validated by Intel for the SS4200 on the support website in a documentation in a document called the Tested Hardware and Operating System List. To install a hard disk drive, remove your new drive from its packaging, Install four of the rotational vibration reduction screws on the hard drive and hand tighten. As the name implies, the rotational vibration reduction screws isolate the hard drive from external vibration, which can affect drive integrity and system performance. The rotational vibration reduction screws act like sh shock absorbers that hold the hard drive steady and allow the disk heads to read data with a minimum of retries. Remember, a retry for data will slow the time that the data is available for your use. So to install the drive, remove the cover. Install the drives in the correct position and sequence. There's numbers here, one, two, three, and four. Loosen the captive screw on the hard drive retention bracket. Put the drive in place. Install the power cable and the associated numbered SAT cable, S SATA cable. Lower the drive into position and tighten the captive screw. Follow the same procedure for, your, for any additional hard drives you want to install in the system. We're only going to be installing two hard drives for this demonstration. The two hard drives will create a RAID 1 mirror set for data protection. If we installed four hard disk drives, that would create a RAID 5 parity set. The RAID sets are built automatically at the time that the system is powered on for the first time after the hard drives are installed. Again, loosen the captive screw. This is position two for our second hard disk drive. Before we put the cover back on, it's a good idea to open up the clamshell and make sure that you have your power and SATA cables secure and tight. Install the power cord, install our network cable. Um, essentially what we've done here is created our network. The router that we have will provide DHCP IP addresses for our network. I'll go ahead and power it on. So at this point, we can see that the drives are initializing by the hard drive LEDs blinking amber and blue. At this point, 
the status LED is amber, indicating that the array has not been initialized to a point that it can be used. While the array is initializing, we'll install the client application. You can install the client application from the resource CD, or you can go to the SS4200E support website and download the software and install from there. The most recent version of software will be found on the support website. So to do the installation, we'll run the installation application to start the installation wizard. The first step is to select the language. And for the language selections, there's three components, the software installer, the storage manager web interface, and the, retro and the included retrospect backup utility. Uh, the language selection we make here is for the software installer only. The storage manager web interface will run in the, in the language set in the client browser settings. And the retrospect backup utility will run in the software language version of the software package. We've got six software versions available at this point in time. With our next software release, we'll be increasing that number. So go ahead and select OK. Click Next to begin the installation. Accept the license agreement terms. Click Next. You can choose to use the default or change the installation folder. Click Next to continue. And uh, review your selections, and if they're all correct, click Install. So while the application's installing, we can look at the, uh, the front panel LEDs. We see now that our status LED that was amber before has turned blue. That, that means the array has initialized to the point where it can be used. The blinking hard drive LEDs indicate that the array is still in the process of initialization, but the array can be used at this point in time. At the Retrospect Firewall Setting Utility, select Allow to let the Retrospect Backup Utility talk through the firewall. At the Congratulations screen, that means our installation is complete, select Done. And the Storage Manager web interface will open up automatically. At this point, it's searching the network for our storage system. And it has been found. So at the Welcome screen, select Next to proceed with the device detection. Internet Explorer may display a security warning. At this point, click Yes to continue and continue to the website, the website being the Storage Manager web interface. The first step is to create an administrator account. You can input a username for the administrator or keep the default and enter a password for the administrator. Click Next to continue. And here we set an identity for our storage system on our network. You can change the, the storage device name and the storage device descriptive name, or you can choose to keep the defaults, which we'll do here. The next page sets up email notifications for warnings. Uh, this is optional, so you can either enter your, uh, an email address to send the warnings to or next to continue. And then we'll set the date and time. You have a, the option to automatically synchronize with a time server, or you have the option to manually enter the date and time. We'll go ahead and use the, the time server selection. And with the time server, you have the ability to use pre-configured default time server or specify a time server of your own. Uh, if you're specifying a time server of your own, that would be in a situation where you have an active directory implementation and you want to synchronize with your domain controller. Click Apply to continue. So at the congratulations screen, our setup is complete. Click OK to continue. And the storage manager again opens up automatically. And finally, we'll show how we use the shared folders that are mapped during the device discovery. If we click on the Shared Folders tab, we see that we have backups and public folders created. If we click on the public folder, then Documents, we see that there are no files in this folder yet. We can choose to upload a file via the Storage Manager with the Upload applet here, or we could simply use Microsoft Internet Explorer. I'll go ahead and minimize this. If we open up My Computer, we see that the public and backup folders are mapped as drives on the storage system. We could go ahead and use these drives as we would any folder or drive on the system. Well, that concludes our demonstration for today.
If someone wanted to get more information, where could they go to get that information? Well, you can find information on this and all of our other Intel server products at www.intel.com. Thanks for coming on the show today and telling us all about network area storage and, you know, how it can really be a benefit in both uh, the home as well and small business. Well, thanks for having me, Alan. So this has been another edition of The Tech Show. Thanks so much for joining us.